Z, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So, I got a chance to see a Joker this week, and I know everybody's already put out their reviews and everything, but I thought I'd give my two cents and uh, just, you know, give my opinion and see what you guys thought. So let's just dive right in. Now, this is a comic book movie, make no mistake about that. Um, there's been a lot of controversy over <clears throat> this movie inciting violence and inciting uh, incel violence. And I have to say that if you're one of those people <clears throat> that wants to preach about how this movie is inciting violence, then you're just stupid. You're just one big dum-dum. Um, because I think that this movie has a lot more to tell than just violence. Um, and I think that it's a story that talks about mental illness, um, society, and that the way uh, we're not only responsible for causing things when we take wrong actions, but also that we're culpable for any inaction. Now, I have to say that um, this movie is probably one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's it's so good. It t talks about a lot of great stuff in this, uh, you know, movie, and I think that it just, it says a lot about, like I said, society today and about mental illness. Now, at the beginning of this movie, I feel so bad for Arthur because not, no one is kind to him uh, at all. Uh, it goes as far as him to write down a line in his journal when he's talking to the psychiatrist at the beginning, the social worker, that I hope that my death makes more sense than my life. And as soon as it said that line in the movie, which is like within the first 15 minutes, I immediately felt bad for this character, which I know is not necessarily a bad thing because you know what, what he, what, is not necessarily a good thing because you know what he becomes. But at the same time, I couldn't help but feel bad for him and anybody that feels that way. And then when he's watching uh, Murray um, with his mother in bed, he imagines uh, Murray saying the nicest things to him only to realize that it's a fantasy and at first and at first I thought it was uh, maybe a flashback of something that had already happened but it's not um, and that's uh, where you kind of get this sense of his delusional psychosis now even his boss after he's uh, explained how he got jumped Arthur says the line why would I steal a sign and he's right uh, he gets jumped by those kids in the trailer. You see the trailer. You see him get jumped and everything. And he gets beat up. And then his boss doesn't believe him when he says, I didn't steal the sign. I got jumped. And the the his boss is like, uh, just give the sign back. And he's like, why would I steal a sign for a going out of business place? And and his boss doesn't believe him. He, so he, he takes he, he um, takes money out of his check, which is ridiculous because he should have stood up for his for his employee in that sense. Now, in the, throughout this entire movie, you can tell that Arthur is like a pressure cooker. Everything just keeps building and building and building, and eventually he's going to blow, and he does. Now, even Arthur's mother, someone that should support him no matter what, was cruel. And she even says the line, um, how can you do comedy? Don't you have to be funny? Now, granted, you do have to be funny. If you're a singer, you have to be able to sing. But as a parent, you should support somebody. Be like, hey, you're not good at it, but maybe you can get better. Uh, there's a, a, a book, I can't remember who it's written by, but it says something about, it's about getting your, your 10,000 hours in. Once you get 10,000 hours in one thing, um, you'll become like a master at it, or you'll become good at it kind of thing. And I also, I have this motto that uh, persistence plus talent equals luck. So if you have a little bit of talent, and a ton of persistence, then you got luck right there. So I, and I think that, I, I don't know if uh, because of Arthur's mental illness and just the fact, the way that he thinks and everything, he has this kind of dark humor that maybe he would have been, uh, he would have turned out to be a good comedian. But then again, he was never given the opportunity or the support to even try. Um, and, and so uh, going back to his, his coworkers and stuff, who in their right mind would give Arthur a gun Okay, so you can obviously tell that no matter what, even having a, a casual conversation with him, that he's a little off. You know, he's not all there. He's, you know, a little bit mental or whatnot. And then, um, uh, in even like the best of circumstances, I wouldn't give someone a gun, but his uh, uh, co-worker does. I think his name is Riley or Ridley or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head, and I should have wrote it down in my notes, but I didn't. So, gives him a gun. And so Arthur can't even catch a break 
when he's doing his gig at the uh, the children's hospital and he's just, you know, doing his thing as a clown and everything and the gun falls out of his pants leg. And um, now I did, now this did elicit a laugh from me uh, myself. But at the same time, I got um, really sad when Arthur got fired. I mean, granted, he should have been fired. You can't bring a gun around children. But at the same time, I go, uh, and plus, he didn't really get a chance to explain himself. You know, I was jumped. I'm scared now. When you get mugged, it is traumatizing. It's something that sticks with you forever. So therefore, a lot of people want to protect themselves. And in this case, Arthur carrying around that gun probably made him feel a lot safer. Now, at the same time I say that, I also say no one should have gave him a gun. The gun was the worst option for Arthur. Now, I think, of course, at the, the start of Arthur's turnaround is when he, or when he really started to turn around um, and started to, to become the Joker was when he killed those three men on the subway car. Now, granted, those men um, were were obviously despicable human beings. They were vomitous human beings. I mean, the, the one was throwing the fries at that woman, and she said she didn't want any fries. They, they were obviously uh, intoxicated, but she said she didn't want any fries, and he threw a stone fries at her, she moved along. And then then Arthur, who has, you know, his, his laughing um, disability or whatnot, he, you know, elicits their uh, attention, and of course then they start to, to beat him up, and then he shoots them. Now, and now it's very clear <clears throat> that Arthur is uh, calling out for help, uh, even when he, uh, even how he, he says to his hair, gosh, even when he says to his therapist, you don't listen to me, you just ask the same questions every week. How am I doing? How do I, ha do I have negative thoughts? And Arthur res Arthur's response is, all I have are negative thoughts. And I think that that right there says something. And I think that even though that, that social worker, even though the 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 it, the funding got cut, and she was no longer going to be able to see Arthur and and give him his meds, I still felt that she should have tried to do something. And it's very obvious that she doesn't care, um, you know, because then she says the lines like line like the government they don't care about you, they don't even care about me. And I I just go yeah, but you're not the one with a mental illness. So I think maybe. You know, uh, you should uh, maybe t maybe take a little bit of pride in your work, even though you may not get paid as much, and but you have someone's you know mental stability in your hands. Now, Arthur's stand-up comedy uh, was awkward when he was up on stage and he was doing his little thing and he was telling his jokes. It it wasn't a joke. It, it was just awkward. I was watching it and I felt bad for him because I was like, this is so weird and everything. And then, um, and like I said before, he can't even catch the smallest of breaks. When those uh, two detectives come by um, to question him uh, at the hospital, after his mother goes to the hospital, he acts very confident. In fact, I was very proud of him. He, uh, he's, he acts very tough. And, but then it, he ends up running into that plate glass door, ruining the whole tough guy persona. Like I was like, oh yeah, he gave him attitude. He was all like, you know, he flicked his cigarette and then bam, right into that door. And I was like, oh man, Arthur, I was feeling it for you. And then it just all got ruined. And I was like, man, you can't, you can't even catch a break. I felt really bad for him. But I, I think, and then, but I think what really flipped the switch, um, or you know, became Arthur Stresser. Um, you know, the, the shooting those three men was the start of it, but what really was, what really started the stressor was when Murray publicly humiliated him on national TV by mocking his comedy tape. Uh, he got a, he got a hold of his comedy tape, which I think it, that comedy club is despicable for giving it to him, but then he just mocked him on live TV, and it was, it was just, that's deplorable, and, and he's a horrible person for doing that. And it's so interesting that when Arthur goes to talk to Thomas Wayne at the benefit, uh, he says, I don't want anything from you, maybe a little bit of warmth. How about just a little bit of decency? What is with you people? Now I look at that and I go, so, and then we'll talk about what happened with that. So uh, after Arthur steals his mother's file from Arkham, you find out that he wasn't born with this condition that he's had, uh, that he was uh, actually beaten by his mother's uh, then boyfriend um, and to the point of brain damage. And then uh, furthermore, exas exacerbates the fact that Arthur is such a sad person and you feel bad for him throughout this movie until the ending. Until the ending, which I'll get to in just a second. But like I was always saying, so he steals his mother's file from Arkham Asylum 
he finds out that she... Well, she finds out through a letter that she had a thing with uh, uh, Thomas Wayne. And then there's this question... And then he goes to... He steals her file... Uh, but he goes to Thomas Wayne, and he's, you know, that's when he's like, can't you just show me the, sh the common decency as a human being? And it's just these rich people, don't like rich people, but these rich people, they're stuck in their own little world that they can't even um, treat someone, anybody, w except for their own, the 1%. With the tiniest bit of shred of humanity, just show them a small piece of kindness, and that's all Arthur wants is he just wants people to be nice to him, and no one's nice to him apparently. So then, except for one person, which we'll get into all that in just a second. Uh, I'm 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 losing my my thing, my train of thought from my notes. Okay, so then he goes to Arkham Asylum, and there's always this question of is he really Thomas's Wayne's uh, illegitimate son, or is he not, and everything, and then. Um, he ends up, because he before that he ends up going to Wayne Manor to talk to him, and he meets Bruce and everything. So, <clears throat> so there's that. So then he, he goes to Arkham, and he gets the file, and then, um, and we'll talk about exactly what happens after that and everything. Uh, well, I'll talk about it now. now. Uh, um, so he, he kills his mother, which I'll talk about it again in just a second. But then, but, but when, after he leaves that, he... Uh, when it, when it's revealed later on that Zazzy Beat's character is in him are not in a relationship, uh, you realize that he's run out of his meds and that he's obviously undergoing some kind of mental break. And after seeing the fact that he had invented his this whole relationship with Zazzy Beat's um, her character's name, I think it was Sophie, but I don't remember. Please don't get upset with me on that. And then I wondered, what else has he invented? I mean, a small piece of me um, wondered if he had uh, created the um, the Franklin Murray show, uh, um, if they really did call him to be on that show, or if uh, he had just made that up. Um, and at that point, I was just like, what else in this movie has he made up in his own head? <clears throat> And it really also hit home when he was sitting on the couch pretending to have an interview with Arthur Murray before he went on the show. So I was like, okay, so he's going on the show, I think, and then, but then he ended up did showing. So I was like, okay, that wasn't something he made up, just the relationship with Zazie Beats. Now I feel bad for Arthur throughout the entire movie until the last 20 minutes um, when he started killing people. And like I said before, it started with his mother. Which, oh, after the three guys, the the three guys on the the three guys on the subway uh, could be considered self defense. Uh, well, the two, and then chase the one down. So that wasn't self defense. But I, those men were beating on him, and he had to protect himself. Now I understand that she stood by and let him get abused as a child, but I don't think that that's an excuse to suffocate her with a pillow. Now I don't think that abuse on children is is acceptable in any way, shape, or form. But I don't think that revenge murder is uh, the answer to that situation. But then again, we're talking about somebody with mental illness, so they prob he obviously is coming off like he doesn't 100% know what he's doing. He's just crazy. Now, although when it was <clears throat> his plan to kill himself on TV, that did sadden me. Cause, um, it, because this has happened before. In real life, people have killed themselves on live TV, in interviews, during press conferences, and for someone like myself, when I've seen that stuff, it sticks with me, and I immediately regret watching it because I'm. You watch it, and then it sticks with you, and it's very haunting. So then, after that, the two coworkers from work, uh, I think the guy Riley or Ridley, I can't remember the bigger guy, and then the little guy, uh, the little person, um, they come by to see uh, the Riley guy wants to get his story straight with with uh, Arthur. And Arthur just pulls out scissors and stabs him. And he kills him. And then um, the little person, I can't remember his name, he lets him go because he says, you were the only one that was nice to me, ever nice to me. Um, and it, he, he, it's, it's kind of comical because he tries to leave, but he can't leave because the chain's too high. And he's like, Arthur, will you help me get the chain? And then he does. And that's when he says the line, you were the only one ever nice to me. And then after that, he escapes the two detectives because he's doing his little dance, which I, I actually did really like on the stairs. And then he sees the detectives yell out his name. And he runs to the subway and he escapes. And then <clears throat> those two detectives end up shooting someone on the subway and then they get beaten uh, pretty badly. They're hospitalized. So then... 
When Arthur shows up to the Murray Franklin show, he asks Marie to call him Joker when he brings um, when he brings him out. And then he says, well, a couple of weeks ago, you called me the Joker. Do you remember? And frankly, Franklin Murray didn't even remember that he had called him the Joker because for him, it was a Tuesday. But for Arthur, it was a, mem a memorable moment. And I think that that says a lot, that that stuck with Arthur, but for Murray, uh, he, it just was like a, something that just came out of his mouth and he just forgot it two seconds later. Now, when Joker comes out on stage, he uh, does this dance and everything, and it's actually quite, uh, I liked it a lot. I, I liked it quite a bit, uh, his little dance and everything. It was, it was kind of fun and everything, a little bit charming and everything, but at the same time, you knew who, you, you as a person watching, you know he's crazy, so you know what's going on. But for, uh, for anyone who doesn't read the comic book, uh, comic books, the comic book, uh, The Dark Knight Returns, this is a memorable scene from that comic book. Um, now, uh, which th it's emulated in this scene in the movie. Now, there's, it's not exactly, uh, ex exactly like the comic book, um, but it's just, it just emulates it a little bit. There's no laughing gas and he doesn't kill the whole audience. Um, and there's no poison, um, like lipstick or whatnot. Um, but th it has the same sentiment as the comic book and, and, and everything. He even uh, kisses the Dr. Ruth type character. Um, he kisses her on the lip and the lips and everything. And then, um, so, and then later, and then after that, he does confess to killing those three men on the subway. And then uh, Murray asks him, why should we believe you? And Arthur says, I've got nothing else to lose. And that's so crazy because this is a man like he's, with his mental illness, he's trying. He's trying his hardest. And at every turn, people are constantly rude to him, unkind. And finally, he's just reached his breaking point. He's like, I've got nothing to lose. And his self-worth, his love interest, basically his whole life, he's, 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 he's lost it all, lost everything. And when he makes the statement that if I had died instead of those three young men, you would have just walked over my dead body, which is further commentary on the way that the rich look at the poor. And I think that that says a lot uh, with today's society as well, with the 1% and the 99% and all that stuff going on. Then when Arthur shoots Murray in the head live on TV and others uh, <clears throat> and utters the line, you get what you deserve which I don't wholeheartedly agree with. I, good things happen to bad people all the time and bad things happen to good people all the time. It happens all the time. And I don't think that it's necessarily uh, you get what you deserve is the right statement. Um, I think maybe death wasn't the thing that Murray deserved because of showing those tapes, but I do think shame might have been one of them. So then, while the riots are going on in the streets, um, one of the protesters sees the Waynes leaving the movie theater. Um, they were seeing Zorro, and they decide to avoid the rioting by going down an alleyway. And the protester shoots the Waynes um, in front of Bruce, uh, and, stating, uh, and starting the whole uh, Batman persona with that whole situation. And he utters the words, you get what you deserve. So. I'm glad that Joker didn't kill the Waynes like he did in the original 1989 movie, but I'm, uh, I'm, it's kind of nice to see that he kind of influenced that. And then finally, Arthur is locked up in Arkham, and I'm assuming it's Arkham because, you know, uh, that's where he ends up and everything. And he kills that therapist at the end, which I kind of uh, thought was a little rough just because I feel maybe she was really trying to help him at the end there, but really, I, you really didn't get too much of a sense of that, but like I was, she was asked, she wasn't asking him the same questions that the social worker therapist lady at the beginning had asked him. She was actually, she was like, she was interested in what he was, she was like, what's the, what's the joke? What are you laughing about? What's so funny? He's like, I was thinking of a joke. She's like, what's the joke? And he's like, you wouldn't find it that funny or something along those lines. And it was because he was thinking about her death. And so, <clears throat> And so then you see him leaving the room and he's got bloody footprints and then uh, the, the orderlies are chasing him through the hallway and then it says, you know, the end or whatnot. So I think this movie is really, I think this movie is really good. I think it says a lot uh, to say. So in conclusion, Joker is not only a commentary on what is going on today in our social, uh, in our social structure, society, and mental health issues, 
It's an in-depth character study, and granted, Todd Phillips directing uh, Joaquin Phoenix in this movie doesn't outwardly appear like your average adaptation. It's darker, eerier, and evidently tells a very different tale of DC's Clown Prince of Crime. But please make no mistake, this is a comic book movie. So, tell me, what did you guys think about Joker? Uh, did you like it? Did you not like it? Who was your favorite character? Yada, yada, yada. Um, I rambled on quite enough. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like button. I <laughs> Hit that like button. I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next review. Bye.